is, is spend a couple minutes um, and introduce uh, what is hopefully going to be an emerging collaboration between Lexus Nexus, um, our partner at Sandia National Labs, and um, you know the organization that needs no introduction at Supercomputer Cray. Um, and the idea here is that there are a whole host of problems that aren't in the traditional data space where Lexus spends a lot of time, nor are they in the traditional supercomputer space, the scientific applications where Cray and Sandia spend so much of their time. Instead, it's a sort of a, a hybrid, it's a fusion of these two capabilities uh, to create a, a series of um, machines and a series of, of applications that can deal with this sort of next generation data challenge. So we have some folks here obviously from labs, uh, from the Navy, um, from Cray, from Lexus. So I guess what we'd like to do is just talk about this for a couple minutes and get your feedback. See what you think about these types of applications, what you think the challenges are for the future, and figure out if we can come up with something that can really change the way these problems are attacked uh, in the next you know, couple of years. So I'm going to start with Richard Murphy um, from the microprocessors group at Sandia National Labs. Uh, we've worked with Richard now for almost two years on a couple of different projects and um, you know, just I think he's one of the most intelligent and well-informed people that I've met on, on this subject. You're way too kind, Jeff. But, um, <laughs> uh, so what we're, what we're looking at at Sandia, what, we're, what I'm very interested in right now is a combination of kind of large-scale, out-of-core uh, query management that can happen on gas with um, additional uh, sorts of graph-based analysis uh, where we've been doing a lot of work with Ray on XMT. So one of, the, one of the things that we've been evaluating is can we combine the two platforms to solve problems in essentially scientific computing, national security, and uh, large-scale large -scale analytics. So some of you were at the XMT bot this morning. Uh, David Bader was talking about uh, trying to do an analysis of large-scale social networks on the order of hundreds of millions of, of relationships. Um, and, and right now, there really don't exist good compute solutions to solve that problem. So any size computer you can build, Gray builds the largest in the world, you know, I can find it a much bigger problem. And so what we've been analyzing is whether or not we can buy the two platforms uh, to do that. So, so far what we've done is a series of sort of decoupled experiments where we um, compared uh, DAS against a number of other platforms. Uh, one critical graph experiment as a, as a very preliminary example against something called the EL example. Uh, uh, the DAS outperformed sort of the next best platform uh, by the like, number of magnitude uh, and its ability to sort of schedule um, schedule this analytic problem. So the idea is you would stage your computation in multiple phases. The first phase is I want to look at this enormous data set that, that I can't analyze fully in memory. Um, and, and good examples are like help points of scientific simulation, sensor networks, um, or you know, things you might find on the web. I want, to, I want to pair this down to the relevant information, put it into the core memory of a supercomputer, in this case the Cray XMT, and then I want to perform a complicated graph-based analysis of it. And I think what, what we've heard in a lot of supercomputing this this year is how, how hard any one of those steps is, much less kind of trying to do it all together. So it, it, in particular, if anybody has any applications out in the audience, I'd love to hear about them uh, you know, after, the, after the chat. That's, that's our focus. Mark and Sean? Okay. No, I, okay. I think it's more of a knowledge management practice. Okay. okay. So, hi, I'm Shreya Mukti. I'm, I run the knowledge management practice at Cray. Uh, so, so, basically, uh, this is a fairly new area for us, though we had a technology for this for a long time, the Cray XMT system. But what we start to see, the, we start to see a huge demand of these kinds of problems, like large data analytics problems. So, what we created recently, this practice with the Cray, which is called knowledge management practice, we are focusing on putting together solutions solve large data analytics problems. And part of our strategy is that we are looking for partnerships because we do understand that in data center, this is not great, but other solutions out there, like Nexus, Nexus is one of the leading solutions. So, so what we are trying to do is like, at the end of the day, provide our clients a solution which can provide them end-to-end -end data analytics. Like for example, using a Nexus, Nexus DAS box, read a lot of amount of data, but then generate a graph as, as uh, Richard described feed it to something, a supercomputer like XMT, they can, they can do very fast uh, graph analytics. And we see a lot of applications in this, in this area, from, from electric grid to bioinformatics and all that. So, but we feel that, you know, really supercomputing can really solve these problems. 
you are trying to solve this problem in, in different ways in the industry, a lot of conventional ways. So I think the approach which Sandy is taking is very non-conventional and very, uh, very innovative. So I think we can really bring a lot of good technology to the party collective, working with Sandy and Lexus. And we are very excited about that. On the Lexus side, I mean, we kind of approach this thing from almost the opposite end. I mean, we're a big data company, um, and so really our DNA wasn't about designing supercomputers. Our DNA was just trying to get data out to customers. But about 10 years ago, we had so much data, um, and that data was so complicated and had so many updates, and the analysis our customers were doing on it was so complicated that we could really no longer perform our business in any efficient way. Um, and so what we really had to do is we had to start over with kind of a blank sheet of paper and come up with a system that could perform these types of data oper operations, ingest the new data, uh, cleanse the data, normalize it against the larger data repositories, and then deliver this data for analysis for our customers in law enforcement, legal, government, intelligence, a lot of these other spaces. Um, so we realized that we didn't have the talent and the tools to build great supercomputers. So we started with just commodity hardware and built them into clusters. But we really focused our time on how to optimize the movement of data, how to optimize the way a programmer can interface with that data, uh, and how we could optimize the parallelization of our hardware, our simple hardware, in order to perform operations very quickly and efficiently. And so we designed a programming language. Uh, we called it Enterprise Control Language. And it was a, uh, a declarative language designed to basically abstract the operation of the system away from the programmer. So he didn't have to be an expert in you know, underlying parallel architectures. He just had to be able to tell the system what he wanted and then it would have these C++ libraries built in through the compiler that would then tell the system to go out there and do what the, the programmer needed. Um, and so that's really been our approach. And as we've gotten larger and started to attack data problems that are way outside of our scale, uh, we started to recognize that that has some advantages, but the ability to work with hardware that's far more powerful, far more efficient, and capable of doing things at a much greater scale than what we do now can really help us tackle some of these much bigger and sort of next generation data challenges. Um, you know, cybersecurity is an example we always look at. Uh, we certainly can ingest a lot of cyber log files and we can analyze you know, six to 12 months of this data, hundreds and hundreds of terabytes. But how do you then deal with the issue of the constant stream of new cyber data that you have to be looking at real time while you look at the larger sort of archival data? When we look at maritime domain awareness for the Navy, it's kind of the same question. Okay, you have this archival uh, evidence of the past six months of of uh, cargo traffic and ship traffic and people and businesses, but how do you look at the real time? What's going on on the seas today? And how can we adjust and normalize that data fast enough so that we can start to look for all of those patterns of activity which may be suspicious or threatening so that real-time analysts and intelligence and in the Navy and in the Coast Guard can find those bad actors in the global maritime supply chain and protect the nation. And I guess that's sort of where we came at this challenge from, but I think we're really as excited as anyone about this. I mean, for a data company to be, you know, in this place with these partners, it's, it's exciting. It's